Hey, what's up everyone? Thanks for coming back for another video. Today I have the new Google Chromecast with Google TV and I just wanted to do a quick unboxing. I want to set it up for you guys. I want to review it and compare it to my Apple TV. All right, so let's just get right into the unboxing. You can see here, it's just this tiny little white box that it comes in. Just some product images, some specs, some things that you can do on it, what sort of resolution it supports and that sort of thing. So let's tear this guy open. All right, so what you can see you have two different compartments here. You have the Google Chromecast pod. Is it a pod? We'll call it a pod. And then the remote. So let's open up the Chromecast first here. And you can see this is very nice. It's just a very clean, all white disc, circular disc looking product with an HDMI cord sticking out. And while it does look nice, I guess it really doesn't matter what it looks like because this is gonna be stuck behind your TV for its entire life. So let's check out the remote now. And this is something new that Google added and it's a very welcome addition. And I think this will help it appeal to more audiences because some people just love the feel of using a remote. They're not comfortable using a phone or a tablet to throw things up on their TV. So having a remote will help this get into the hands of people that aren't really comfortable using other devices. And this remote is nice. It's all white like the Google Chromecast is with some dark gray lettering. It's light, it's small, it's very nice. And it does have obviously all the navigation that you would need for the Google Chromecast, but it also adds a few buttons for your TV as well. It has volume up and down, it has the power button, and it has an input switch button. So this is very welcome. I love being able to control my TV with just one remote. And the rest of the box just has the user manual and the power adapter and the power cord along with some batteries for the remote. So let's go plug this in and show you how to set it up. So setup is pretty simple. You connect it to your TV, you plug it into a power source, it turns on, it asks you to connect to a Wi-Fi network, so you just connect it to your Wi-Fi. From there, it starts to look for software updates. Once the software is all up to date, it will restart, and then it'll ask you to sign into your Google account. Now you can do all this right on the screen, or if you have the Google Home app installed on your phone, you can just pull up the QR code scanner and scan the QR code, and it'll be pretty much done after that. So you log into your Gmail account. From there, you accept some terms and conditions from Google. And then you go through the process of setting up the remote so that it controls your TV. You set up the volume controls and then actually powering it on and off. And then you are asked which apps you would like to pre-install before actually setting this thing up. And you're pretty much done after that. Now, setup for me took roughly 10 minutes, but that's because most of the time was taken for a software update. If I didn't have to do a software update, I would have been done in maybe two or three minutes. But with that software update, which I'm guessing a lot of people will have to do when they first get this, you're looking at more of a 10, 15 minutes, depending upon how fast your Wi-Fi is. Now let's get into the review of this because I've been using this for a while now and I want to preface my review by saying that I'm coming from an Apple TV. I also use Roku's on a couple of my TVs, but my main one that I use is an Apple TV. So I'm going to be doing a lot of comparisons to the Apple TV and I know it's not apples to apples. So make sure that you understand that as we go along here is that the Apple TV has a lot more storage. It's a lot bigger. It's completely different operating system and it's three, four times the cost of this. So let's start off by going over the things that I really love about the Google Chromecast. First and foremost is the For You screen here that you're initially brought to or the home screen. This is something that I really, really love, especially compared to the Apple TV because this home screen is all about the content that you're watching rather than just a home screen of apps like the Apple TV has. And basically what will happen here is that the Chromecast will kind of pick up on the trends and the type of content that you're watching, what shows you're watching, which movies, which live TV, YouTube, or anything like that. And it'll put it right on this home screen for you so that when you turn on the device, it's right here for you to watch. And if you scroll down, you can get to your app library. You can get to things you left off on and quickly resume them. You can get to see what's trending and other suggestions that Google has for you. And it's very similar to YouTube TV if you've ever used that before because you log in, you're at the home screen, you have the channels at the top that you watch the most. And then as you scroll down, you can get to specific shows, movies, and channels that you wanna watch. And speaking of YouTube TV, if you're a YouTube TV user, you're gonna really like this product because the next tab over is the live TV. You can basically integrate your YouTube TV right here and you can see the schedule, you can see the top channels. It's almost like you have the YouTube TV home screen right here on the Google Chromecast. 
and you can scroll down and see what's playing right now, see the schedule, and then once you find something you wanna see, you click on it, and you're brought right into that channel, what's playing, and then you're inside the YouTube TV app. So if you click back, you're not going back to the Chromecast home screen, you're actually staying into the YouTube TV app, and you can kind of click around there or click the home button and go back to the Chromecast home screen. Again, this is just an awesome feature that I just love the integration with YouTube TV to have that right on a tab as a home screen on the Google Chromecast so I can quickly flip through to see if I want to watch live TV. And if I don't see something I like, I can just keep scrolling through, maybe go to movies or TV shows or to something else and watch something that I do want to watch. So the other tabs on the Chromecast, you have movies. This is suggested movies based on your subscriptions and things you can rent or buy. The next tab is TV shows. Again, same type of deal here. Suggested TV shows, things that you have on subscription, things that you can rent, things you can buy. The next tab is the apps where you can go and download apps. You can download games and that sort of thing. And then the last tab is the library where you can add shows or movies from those two tabs to the watch list to the library. Or it'll also have all your DVR recordings from your YouTube TV housed here as well. Overall, this UI is very easy to understand. I picked it up right away. Everything is very clear. It's not as simple as the Apple TV or Roku is, but I think this is still quick and fast. And once you understand how to get around, you're gonna to get to the content that you want faster. The other thing that I think is better is the remote. I think it's so much better than the Apple TV remote. It has the same type of buttons as the Apple TV remote. It's about the same size lengthwise, but it is definitely thicker, which actually feels better in the hand in my opinion. And also it will be harder to squeeze between cushions or get lost somewhere. The volume buttons on the side, which feels pretty natural, whereas the Apple TV remote has the volume buttons on the front of it. The Google remote actually has a power button, whereas the Apple TV, you have to hold the menu button and then press sleep for it to turn off. The Google remote also has the quick buttons to get to YouTube and Netflix. These work well are a nice touch if you use those platforms a lot. And you also get a Hey Google button for voice searches. That works awesome. But by far the best thing is the scrolling. So having the circular button here that you can actually click to go left, right, up, or down compared to the Apple TV, which you swipe with your finger and that's extremely sensitive or not sensitive enough. And it seems to never land on the thing you want, even after years of usage like I have. And it seems so simple. I mean, you just click to where you wanna go rather than try to swipe and get the right swipe to where you wanna go. But I find that I can navigate on the Google Chromecast so much better than I can on the Apple TV. Now I had the Apple TV and the Google Chromecast both running 4K HDR content. And I honestly could not tell the difference in the picture. Both looked amazing in my opinion and both loaded up very, very quickly. In terms of app loading, I find that the Apple TV does load up things just a little bit faster, but again, this thing is four times the price of the Google Chromecast, so you would expect it to be a little bit faster, but not so much that I can tell a huge difference. I mean, they both load things up extremely quick. One area where the Apple TV will have an advantage of is the, the wallpapers or the screensavers. This might not matter to you at all, and you might not even use them, but Apple TV has these really nice live wallpapers that come on after a certain point, whereas Google's has nice ones, but they're just not quite as nice as the Apple TV. Basic gaming will work well on both of these, but one thing that is noticeably missing is Google's cloud-based gaming service called Stadia. Now, it isn't supported right now, but it says that they will have it supported sometime early in 2021. And if you look around, a lot of people have tutorials on how to sideload it onto the Google Chromecast, so that's always an option too. And overall, I'm just extremely impressed with the Google Chromecast. In fact, I love it a lot more than my Apple TV for many reasons. The biggest being the home screen. I love that they put the content that you're gonna wanna watch right here on the home screen. I love the integration with YouTube TV and how easy it is to get to live TV. And anyone that has YouTube TV should highly think about getting this. And the remote, it's so simple, it's so small and has just the basic buttons on it, but it is just so much better, so much more easy to use than the Apple TV remote. I kind of lost touch with how a remote should work because I've been using the Apple TV remote so much and this one I just love. And performance has been terrific, almost right on par with the Apple TV. And for a quarter of the price of the Apple TV, this thing, in my opinion, is no brainer. 
And the only thing I really miss about the Apple TV is the Ethernet port because I love being able to hardwire my electronics in so I don't have to worry about Wi-Fi cutting in or out or bandwidth issues or anything like that. But to this point, I haven't had any buffering or any performance issues, so I'm happy about that. And I don't really miss AirPlay all that much either because a lot of the apps that I use, like YouTube or YouTube Kids or anything like that, it supports Chromecast already. So I can still put it up on my TV easily using the Chromecast. I don't even need AirPlay. So for a guy that uses a lot of Apple products, and you can go back through my recent reviews and you'll see that I, I love Apple products, but I try to be impartial and I try to give my best recommendation without a bias. And in this case, I have to say that the Google Chromecast, I would probably recommend more than the Apple TV. And it all boils down to price, like it always kind of does. So this one goes for 50 bucks, the Apple TV goes for 150, 200 bucks. Do you, I think that the Apple TV is four times better than this product? Absolutely not. And in many cases, I think that the Google Chromecast is a lot better than the Apple TV. So if you're looking for a new streaming device, especially if you're a YouTube TV user, check out the Google Chromecast. It's a great value, in my opinion, for 50 bucks. This thing is awesome. So thanks again for watching, everyone. Like, subscribe, comment. If I left anything out, make sure you comment and ask me. I will get to it. I appreciate everyone that watches. Thanks, and I'll catch you on the next video.